All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Ask the Pastor. Uh, we're going to jump right into it today. We only have two questions, and uh, so I'll, I want to encourage you to, to make sure that you are sending in your questions uh, to Ask the Pastor each week so that we can answer uh, those for you. Uh, I'm sure if you're reading your Bible every day as you should, then obviously you have questions, or if you're listening uh, to the Bible being preached every week from the pulpit, then then surely, you know, you have questions uh, about the Bible, um, especially as I'm preaching through the book of Revelation. Uh, surely you have questions about the book of Revelation. So d d don't take it for granted that, you know, we're going to have a lot of questions to answer. Um, sometimes we only have very few, but we need more. And so I pray that, uh, that you'll submit questions so that uh, we'll have plenty to answer, uh, uh, you know, through our podcast and our webpage. But let's get to it. We have two questions for today. And uh, the first question is this. The person writes, my first question has to do with the number 40, four, zero. Is there a significance to this number in the Bible? Yeah, I believe so. And basically what the person is asking is, uh, what is the significance of the number 40 in the Bible? Well, let me just say a couple of things about that. First of all, the number 40 is mentioned 146 times in Scripture. And uh, the number 40 generally uh, identifies a time of testing or trial or probation. And so uh, usually when that number it's, is given, it's used within that context. Trial, uh, testing, probation. Uh, for example, during Moses' life, he lived 40 years in Egypt and then 40 years in the desert uh, before God used him to lead out the nation of Israel. So 40 years in Egypt, it was a time of testing and trial. 40 years in the desert, a time of testing and trial. Not only that, Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights on two separate occasions. You see this in Exodus chapter 24, uh, verse 18, and Exodus chapter 34, uh, verses 1 through eight, or 28. While he is there, he is receiving the law. Uh, he also sent spies 40 days to investigate the land that God had promised the nation of Israel. And you see this in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. And so once again, we see that number 40 is uh, in, encompasses this time of trial and testing. Um, the prophet Jonah, he powerfully warned uh, the, the ancient Ninevites for 40 days. Uh, you know, 40 days destruction was going to come on them for their many sins. Uh, the, the prophet Ezekiel laid on his side for 40 days, symbolizing Judah's sin. Uh, also, Elijah went 40 days without food or water on, on Mount Horeb. Jesus was tested by the devil uh, 40 days in the wilderness. And so, as we see here, the, the number of 40 in the Bible is used in relation to, to testing, to trial, and uh, probation. I could give you many more, uh, you know, examples. For example, the, the children of Israel were punished by wandering in the wilderness for 40 years uh, so that a generation would die off. And so we see probation there and trial and testing. And so, uh, and so I would say that number 40 in the Bible is used uh, in relation to trials, testing, and in times of probation as well. So thank you for your question. Um, a second question is this. When God mentions the firstborn as being dedicated to him, what exactly does that mean, and why only the firstborn? All right, well, thank you for your question. Again, I'm going to quote a passage of Scripture here uh, from Exodus 22. It says, You shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your, uh, your possessions the firstborn of your sons you shall give me. You shall do the same of your oxen with your sheep, Seven days it shall be with its mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. Um, and so, I mean, this is a great question. And, 
the verses that I'm reading from, from are uh, verses 28 and 29 of, of Exodus 22. And they're really defining the holiness of God. But to really answer this question, we have to go back to Exodus 13. Now, in Exodus 13, the Israelites are on their way out of Egypt. And God has given Moses instructions uh, for the Passover. And in verse 2 of chapter 13, God says, and I quote, Consecrate every firstborn male to me, the firstborn from every womb among the Israelites. Both man and domestic animal, it is mine. Okay, that's the quote. So this is the first place in the Bible where God is giving the nation of Israel instructions about their firstborn. Later in the same chapter, God says it again and gives purpose and clarification to the meaning. All right, so this is what God says later on in the same chapter, and I'm quoting. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you, and your fathers, and gives to you, you are to present to the Lord every firstborn male of the womb. All firstborn livestock you own that are males will be the Lord's. You must redeem every firstborn of a donkey with a flock animal. But if you re do not redeem it, break its neck. However, you must redeem every firstborn among your sons. In the future, when your sons ask, what does this mean? Say to him, by the strength of his hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the place of slavery, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go. The Lord killed every firstborn male in the land of Egypt, both, both the firstborn of humans and the firstborn of livestock. That is why I sacrifice to the Lord all the firstborn of the womb that are males. But I redeemed all the firstborn of my sons. So let it be a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead. For the Lord has brought us out of Egypt by the strength of his hand. So, uh, so basically God tells them, Because I struck down the firstborn in Egypt, because I struck them down and I, and I did not redeem them, I struck them down, I did not redeem them, but I did redeem the firstborn of the Israelites. And so God basically says, you know, dedicate your firstborn males to me. And it's, it's, a, it's, as a, it's a reminder for them of how God destroyed the firstborn of the Egyptians and how God redeemed the nation of Israel out of Egypt. And so... Uh, I would say today that when we dedicate the firstborn of our children to the Lord, it's a great opportunity to preach the gospel. You know, the reason that we are dedicating our firstborn male son to the Lord is because it is a reminder of what God did for the nation of Israel when they were in, uh, were, were in Egyptian bondage. Uh, God destroyed the firstborn of the Egyptians, but he spared the firstborn of the Israelites. And so, uh, and so that's why God commanded the firstborn to be dedicated to him as a reminder of God's deliverance uh, through the Exodus, a reminder of the Passover. Now, you know, often people dedicate their children to the Lord today. I know here at our church we have what we call parent and baby dedications. And it's an opportunity for people to come forward and to dedicate their children, not only their children, but themselves uh, to the Lord. And again, and this is a reminder of the gospel and how God has saved us and has spared us. Now, the scripture says, dedicate the firstborn of, of your males. And I believe that uh, it, it, it's still good and healthy to do that. Why? Because it gives us an opportunity to proclaim the gospel. But I also don't think that there's anything wrong with dedicating all your children to the Lord and saying, Lord, I realize that my children are a gift from you. You have given them to me. You created them in the womb. And, and Father, we dedicate them back to you for you to use uh, for your glory. But specifically to answer your question, that is why the firstborn males were dedicated to the Lord as a reminder of the Passover and God's deliverance of them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Well, thank you so very much for your questions today. Uh, continue to send them in as I look forward to answer them in the weeks to come.
Thank you.